Is this the best way to soft bend a piece of cardboard or is there a better way? Should you be getting your cardboard wet when you're building a cardboard model? Can you paint cardboard? Find out the answers to these questions and many more Cardboard Advanced Basics. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up, and then you hit the bell. Hit the bell again, so you get the little parentheses around it. That way you'll be notified every time I have a new video. Don't forget to check out the design and making merch just below the video on the shelf. T-shirts, hoodies, stickers, leggings, and phone cases. In the previous cardboard video, Cardboard Basics, we took a look at how to make some basic cubes with a little bit more advanced construction. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to make a cylinder, a cone, and some more advanced box shapes that you might encounter every day when you're building models or interiors or architectural pieces. You'll need a good self-healing cutting board like this Arteza cutting board, link to that below, ruler, some PVA white glue, and an X-Acto blade very sharp you need lots of blades i can't stress this enough some tape and i like a right angle to cut my corners with you'll also need some sort of a glue dispenser these lure locks with blunt nose tips link below they are fantastic for putting glue where you want i suggest get yourself a good circle cutter i'm using this fiskar circle cutter here link below because cutting circles without a laser is nearly impossible. So let's start by making a cylinder. We're gonna use this Fiskars uh, circle cutter. The beautiful thing about this thing is it doesn't leave a mark in the middle of the circle that you're cutting out like it would with like a compass or something like that. So that's why I like this. Now this circle cutter is made for material that's a little bit thinner than the cardboard that I'm using it for. So I have to give it a little bit of a cut with the X-Acto knife, but 90% of the work is already done. So to make the sides of the cylinder, we're going to wrap the cardboard around the edge of the cylinder to get the correct length. You could measure this, of course, as well, or even calculate it with some math. I just simply wrap it around. We're going to use a little bit of painter's tape to glue the two ends of the cylinder onto the two-inch strip of cardboard here. I am using a slightly more flexible or thinner piece of cardboard for the edge that I'm rolling around the circles. We're going to lay down a little bit of white glue here with the squeezable blunt nose tip uh, dispenser. I'm going to put a piece of tape on the end and we're basically going to roll this piece of cardboard on the edge of these circles to make our cylinder. We're going to tape everything together. You want to use the painter's tape because it doesn't uh, grab onto the cardboard as aggressive as regular masking tape would. Still a good idea to maybe stick it on your shirt one time to get a little bit of uh, fuzzy and take some of the tack off um, because even on the cheapo cardboard, it can grab onto it and still pull off the fibers off the cardboard. I'm just making some last minute adjustments here get everything as flat and smooth as I can and here it is with the tape removed nice little cylinder one of the great things that cardboard is good for is mocking up folded sheet metal parts now not all folded sheet metal parts are bent at 90 degrees sometimes they have softer radiuses sometimes they have bends in them cardboard is fantastic for that so let's build a little bit more of a real-world advanced cube where we take a look at maybe an inside radius, uh, a nice fat beveled uh, corner, and maybe a softer radius curve and how we would build something like that to simulate either a sheet metal part or uh, possibly like a molded part to get a good idea of what that's going to look like. So I'm going to cut the two end pieces first. And I'm basically going to make the sides and stick them on kind of like we did with the cylinder before. I'm going to go for the low-hanging fruit first here, meaning I'm going to do the easy corners and edges on this simulated 
uh, box part here. So we are just lay down some white PVA glue. Again, going for the low-hanging fruit, doing the easy stuff first. This gives us a little bit of stability in our model so that when we go to do these trickier corners and uh, bends and stuff, we have a little bit of structure inside of our model already to keep things straight and square and something we can actually grab onto. We're going to roll this edge uh, along the um, this cube. I'm going to glue on the one side first, then I'm going to come in and I'm going to lay in my glue along the other edge. And we need to roll that edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a little water. That's going to soften up the fibers on the outside of the cardboard. Now we're not soaking the cardboard in any sort of way. We're just allowing the fibers to expand when we roll them around that uh, soft edge right there so that they don't tear and we don't have any issues. We soften them up. I mean, we're going to add a little bit more so that it can kind of settle and get us a nice soft radius around that corner. The next thing we're going to do here is we're going to attack that uh, larger 45 degree beveled part. And in this case, I'm actually going to bevel the little part that goes in there with a little 45 and then just glue everything in. Because those pieces that I cut, that butt up against the, the little part that we just cut, they have straight 90 degree cuts on them. So dropping in a little 45 on the part that you're dropping in is going to be the best way to get yourself a nice clean edge along those uh, surfaces there. Here we're going to do something, an inside radius piece. So we're going to put water on the inside of our cardboard. That's going to allow the cardboard to stretch on the inside. And then we're going to use a piece of PVC uh, to press it into place. I rough cut the cardboard twice because I'm going to put a rubber band around this thing. And I don't want the rubber band to uh, cause any distortion in the cardboard. I'm going to let it set up and uh, let that dry in place. And that water really helped us uh, make that inside radius. I'm going to free cut this last uh, edge and peel off our tape. And we're going to have a nice simulated interesting little box that's going to be a lot more like a real world part that you would make. Let's take a look at how we can make a cone. I'm going to cut a mat board uh, part with the circle cutter here. Again, this mat board is a lot thicker and tougher than the cardboard even that we cut before. So we have to finish cutting it because that circle cutter is really not meant for that. It's meant for more like a uh, bristol board here, a thin weight bristol board or a paper. And it cuts through that no problem. The cardboard's a little bit tougher. We need to put a little lip on our uh, cone here and then uh, taper the top. Just a tiny little bit of glue. And this lip overlaps the inside on both sides and allows us to glue the skirt together, so to speak, to make a basic cone. And I do this by hand. And the cone is a little oversized. And I use my fingers and the back of a paintbrush to sort of burnish and get the tip and form that correct. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where that seam is uh, to put that cone together with on my bottom circle and that's going to allow it to fit nice and flush. I trace where that circle goes in the bottom of the cone so I know where to put it and where to put my glue and so that when I go back and place the bottom of the cone in I know exactly where to put it right along that line. I let that set up and I'm actually going to use the uh, back of my X-Acto here and I'm going to burnish the outside of that cone a little bit just to get it a little bit smoother. The heat uh, generated by the friction of burnishing it back and forth helps uh, flatten out and smooth out the cardboard. I rough cut it uh, to the correct shape and then I put it on 120 grit sanding uh, flat surface here like a sanding pad so that I can get the thing absolutely flat and smooth. I'm going to show you how to paint your cardboard. It needs to be sealed and I seal it up with some shellac and I just put that on with a paint brush and then I put on some primer and I'm going to show you what that finish looks like. So this is a metallic spray paint finish on the part with the shellac that's also on the outside and this is the bottom. It's a little tough to see here but that's a little rougher, quite a bit rougher actually in real life than where we shellacked it. So I, you need to seal the cardboard. 
This is a piece of Bristol, and that's a pretty much higher quality than the regular cardboard, and that finishes up beautifully. You still do need to seal it. That completes the cardboard advanced basics. Anything you guys like to see in future videos for cardboard or model making, leave it in the comments below. Good luck, and have fun making models. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the bottom right of the video or below the video. Give it a thumbs up and follow the channel there as well. If you want to know about upcoming design content and projects that I'm working on, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and my favorite Google Plus links below. Also, don't forget to check out all the design and making gear below. Rock on. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.